All right, hey everybody, we have just concluded uh, our attempt to learn more about what's going on at the National Rifle Association by attending the uh, fall board meeting. We're here in Herndon, Virginia. Uh, the meeting did just adjourn maybe half an hour ago or so. We've been talking with some of the directors and some of the other people who are attending, some of the other members and the media who's here as well. If you don't recognize this guy, this is Frank Tate. Frank is running for the NRA Board of Directors. He wants to get on the ballot. He's uh, collecting signatures from voting eligible NRA members now. He's, you're over a thousand, you said. And uh, that's well along the way to where he needs to be to get onto the ballot. Um, he's obviously not going through the nominating committee because he is running on a reform platform and is very much aligned with the things that we're interested in seeing change with the NRA at Save the Second. So uh, Frank, elevator pitch. Uh, thanks, Rob. So I'm a uh, Benefactor Life member. Um, I am an NRA training counselor. I've trained hundreds of instructors and thousands of students. Uh, I recently retired from my day job. I've spent uh, 37 years in the technology world. And of those 37 years, I spent 20 serving on the boards of directors uh, as management on public companies, uh, up to about 750 million in revenue, uh, nonprofit companies. Uh, I currently serve on four boards. I am the chair of a gun club, I'm the incoming chair. I'm the treasurer of one. I'm a trustee on another, uh, so I understand how boards of directors work uh, and that what I look at with the NRA and why uh, I put my name on the petition at the annual meeting is because I look at what's been going on, what's been coming out in the news, and I believe that we need greater transparency and accountability from the board. And I understand how to do that because I've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, the other thing that I look at is that when you, know, you look at the arc of an organization, the organization starts out focused on its members, it starts focused, focused on its mission. And then organizations mature to the point that management starts to become self-perpetuated. And it's more about not solving the problem because you want to be able to continue to have your power and your funding. And then organizations then sometimes move into a position where a leader is perceived as the organization. And I think that's where the NRA is today. And it's the board's job to rebalance so that the board is focused on doing the business of the members uh, at, through, through the leader. But it's the, it's the focus on what's, the, what's most important, the members or the leader. And I think we need to get rebalanced so that we're focused on the members and doing what we need to do for the members. All right, so having said all that, um, obviously we did just complete uh, you know, our, our endeavor. Now we, we ended up out of the room for uh, what, the better part of two hours, maybe two and a half hours, uh, while they did a working lunch and they were in executive session. And apparently there were some, uh, some controversial things talked about and there were some uh, directors who spoke apparently very candidly and frankly about the problems inside the NRA and trying to resolve them, but we weren't privy to any of those conversations. We did, however, attend the first couple of hours of the uh, board meeting and what, what are your thoughts? How did what you saw this morning, you've been running now for, for two or three months since you announced you're, you were running. Did, did anything change in, in, as far as what the things you just said or how much of that solidify or, or evolve your opinion of what's going on at the board and what the NRA needs? I think it solidified a few things. One is it was a highly scripted meeting. Uh, with 76 directors, it's ungovernable without a very tight script. The challenge with a tight script is that that means there's a small group that's controlling everything. And so to me, one of the key messages of Save the Second, the board's too big, we need to shrink the size of the board. Uh, the second thing that we need to do is you know, we need term limits. You're seeing directors who have been here, you know, Wayne's been there for 41 years. You need new blood. So when you have challenges that, that you know, I think it's a famous Einstein quote, the thinking that got you into this situation is not going to get you out of it. You need new people with new thinking. So to me, I was... Kind of expected but disappointed that the, the all the ballots all the uh, uh, the signatures we got on the petition to put mandatory attendance in place got deferred so right. it got deferred to the january meeting um, but we, you, need, you need people to actually show up you need a smaller board and to me you need term limits since that's why i'm on board with the save the second approach uh, because i think that that's that's one of the ways that you get new blood in there new thinking in there uh, the world is changing very fast uh, you know, one of the things they talked about in the, before they went into executive session is this rapid response war room uh, so that things like what uh, Beto O'Rourke said about coming to confiscate AR-15s, the NRA is now being responding to it. Things like the San Francisco uh, a claim that NRA is a terrorist organization, being able to respond to that. But to me, that's still a reactive mindset. And one of the big changes that I think still needs to happen is to move the NRA to a proactive mindset. 
So one of the things that I've been doing is going to uh, our local politicians town halls. Uh, I have the uh, pleasure uh, that uh, I am in Congresswoman Scanlon's district. She's on the Judiciary Committee. She's the vice chair. She is pushing uh, registration. She's pushing magazine limits. She's pushing uh, assault weapon bans. Uh, and I challenge her to her face that where are you, and you know, if you're talking about saving lives uh, from firearm incidents, where is gun safety? Right. Where, how come the NRA is not at this table? How come we're not doing gun safety, home firearm safety classes? Uh, uh, I have secured funding from a foundation that will pay for a thousand students to go through NRA home firearm safety. I offered that to Congresswoman Scanlon. I offered that to Congresswoman Dean, PA4 and PA5. I offered that to State Senator um, uh, Williams in Pennsylvania. I offered it to my rep, Rep Romira in Pennsylvania. I also offered it to my local township, Crickets. And so, you know, this is one of the things I think the NRA has an opportunity to get a positive safety-oriented message out there because I think we're aligned. We don't want guns in the hands of criminals. We don't want guns in the hands of children who are not properly supervised. And we don't want guns in the hands of the clueless. And education solves those problems. And I think kind of at the core of the anti-mindset is they're afraid of guns. And education help address this fear. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no doubt that, uh, you know, obviously my primary role uh, in my career has been education. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, you know, even people who are gun people um, are... are you know, afraid, maybe not emotionally, but intellectually uncomfortable or afraid of, you know, switching a technique or trying a new type of gun or thinking about a different tactic because this is how we've always done it. Well, think about it, if you've never done it, then you've got, you, you've got that, that natural human fear of the unknown and it's very easy to demonize guns, especially when people are scared of active shooters or terrorism, whatever it is. So listen, I, I, I appreciate you, you know, sharing with Save the Second some of your thoughts on the board meeting and the Save the Second audience, uh, letting them know that you are aligned with our position on reform. I think that's very important as you go ahead with uh, trying to get on this board because this board uh, needs all the help it can, can get. And I, I, I'm more sure of that now than I was a few days ago. Uh, but I'll be doing a more thorough report on uh, my thoughts and uh, some of the other Save the Second board members, Ron and Andy, are here as well. So they'll be sharing their thoughts also. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it.